Access to justice is called on the National Judicial Council to reduce the amount of vacation time judges cumulatively enjoy in Nigeria. Central Bank of Nigeria says 817.48 billion naira Nigeria's gross oil receipt is lower than the provisional quarterly budget. The lower chamber of the U.S. Congress and the House of Representatives voted in favor of tougher sanctions on Russia. And the attorney of Venus William victims family, Michael Stinkel, says Venus accelerated from zero to almost 20 meters per hour in about four seconds. Good and welcome to news on the African Broadcasting Network. I'm Okumti Fekuji about other news in details. The Senate on Tuesday finally passed the bill establishing the Nigerian Peace Corps, NPC, an organization that would provide employment for the youth, facilitate peace, volunteerism, community service, and nation building. The Peace Corps bill, sponsored by Senator Bayero Nafadal, was passed in a unanimous voice vote after the Chairman Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters. Senator David Umar presented the reports on issues surrounding adoption of the conference reports on the bill. He said the major objective of the NPC bill was which is to provide employment for the youth could be achieved by threatening existing agencies and not necessarily creating new ones, which would also prevent the federal government from being overburdened. A said the committee, however, observed that the powers and functions of the NPC called for consign and urged the, that they are subjected to further examination. In his remarks, the President of the Senate, Dr. Bukula Saraki, says the journey towards establishing the NPC had been a long one. He commended the committee for a good job and expressed optimism that when signed into law, the bill would help to address the problem of unemployment among youths in the country. The NPC bill was passed in the House of Representatives in June 2016, while the Senate passed its version in November 2016. The two chambers set up a conference committee to reconcile the errors of differences in the bill. The Senate at its plenary sitting on May 22, 2017, deliberated on the report of the conference committee and referred it to the Committee on Judiciary to investigate into some allegations against the NPC. Access to justice has called on the National Judicial Council NGC to reduce the amount of vacation time judges cumulatively enjoy in Nigeria to nine weeks. Last two weeks, many courts, including the Federal High Court and many state courts, went on recess for a period varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction when they were generally expected to last for about eight weeks. Most cases before courts will recommence after the vacation period, even though provisions are generally made for few vacation judges to handle emergencies who will sit throughout the vacation period. This recess is, however, not the only vacation superior court judges are entitled to, as they also go on recess for two weeks at Easter and two weeks at Christmas time. In total, Nigeria courts are generally closed for vacation for about three months. According to a statement by the group, which was endorsed by its deputy director, Dr. Adenike Ayidon, at the weekend, the NGC, as part of its reform agenda, says that they should re enliven public trust and confidence in the judiciary by immediately adopting policies limiting the amount of vacation time of judges to nine weeks cumulatively, and particularly changing vacation procedures so that all criminal courts run continuously throughout the year. Comparing the situation with other jurisdictions, the group says in most Western countries, superior court judges go on leave for between four to two, three months in a year. And the business news. 
The Central Bank of Nigeria says it only than 17.48 billion naira of Nigeria's gross oil receipt is lower than the provisional quarterly budget estimate by 7.5% during the first quarter of 2017. The decline in oil revenue relative to the budget estimate was attributed to the persistent fall in receipts from crude oil gas export due to the continuous drop in the price of crude oil in the international market and also the buyer series of short ins and short downs at some Nigerian National Petroleum Cooperation terminals owing to pipeline vandalism and repairs during the review quarter. CBN in its 2017 quarterly economic report released recently put the federally collected revenue in the quarter one also fell short of the 2016 provisionally quarterly budget estimate by 36.3 percent. The Minister of State Petroleum Resources Ibi Kachuku says the insecurity in the region was undermining the nation's capacity to realize its full potential in oil production. The APS Bank put the federal government provisional retained revenue in quarter one at 608.11 billion now why total provisional expenditure was 1.675 billion naira, resulting in the estimated deficit of 1.067 billion naira. Although CBN disclosed that Nigeria's crude oil production, including condensates and natural gas liquids, averaged 1.59 million barrels per day, or 143.10 million barrels per day. This represented an increase of 0.05 barrels per day or 3.2% compared with 1.54 barrels per day or 141.68 barrels per day recorded in the preceding quarter. Also, crude oil exports stood at 1.14 million barrels per day or 102.6 million barrels per day, representing an increase of 4.6% compared with 100.09 million barrels per day or 100.28 million barrels per day recorded in the previous quarter. The development was due mainly to the temporary shutdown of Nimbi Creek Line, which exports bony light crude oil to allow for repairs. Allocation of crude oil for domestic consumption was maintained at 0.45 million barrels per day or 40.50 million barrels in quarter one. Estimated average electricity generation in quarter one equally rose by 0.09% to 3,500 megawatts per hour compared with the level attained in the preceding quarter. The average estimated electricity consumed, which was 2,998 megawatts, also rose by 0.08% compared with the level attained in the preceding quarter. The increase was attributed to an improvement in generation and transmission. The Office for National Statistics says the United Kingdom economic growth remained tepid in the second quarter through the initial estimate for gross domestic product which was aligned with economic forecast uk gdp grew 0.3 percent in the second quarter of the year up only slightly from the disappointing growth of 0.2 percent in the first quarter but in line with the consensus forecast meanwhile year one year gdp rose 1.7% also as expected, but down from the 2.0% in the previous quarter. ONS says economic growth was driven by the service sector, notably the retail and firm sectors, with construction and manufacturing acting as a good track. GDP per head was estimated to have increased by 0.1% during the quarter, while employment rate reached a record high of 74.9% during the second quarter, as the total real wages fell 0.7% compared with a year earlier, which was the most since August 2014. The inspiring growth in the first half of the year will mean eating the latest Bank of England pred predicting 
for GDP growth in 2017 of 1.9% will require a step improvement in the second half of the year. And our stories from other African countries. Libya's UN-backed Government of National Accord, GNA, Prime Minister Faiz al Shiraz and Commander of the Libyan Army, Field Makachal Khalifa Aftal, agreed in an unprecedented joint statement on Tuesday to commit to a conditional ceasefire and to hold elections next spring. Following hours of official meetings held under the auspices of French President Emmanuel Macron and chaired by the new UN envoy to Libya, Ghazan Salami, in La Salon Saint Cloud near Paris, the two Libyan leaders signed a 10 point declaration in which they pledged to commit to ceasefire, hold elections, and integrate all militias within an unified national army under political control. Saraj and Afton also agreed to work to hold elections as soon as possible under UN supervision as political solution could go a long way to end the ongoing. Meanwhile, the French president says elections will be held in spring next year. As they also point out, the establishment of unified national institutions including a central bank and a national oil cooperation. They also point in the declaration of fighting terrorism, curbing the waves of migration through Libyan coast, and preventing the destabilization of North African and Sahel, Sahel countries. The meeting between the two rival leaders in the second, in the phase of three months as a meeting, was held in Abu Dhabi in May, but saw no agreement on a joint communique. Algeria has joined mediation talks over the Gulf crisis with Qatar as Algerian Minister of Foreign Affairs Abdul Kader Mouchal Moussael meets on Tuesday in Abu Dhabi with his UAE counterpart Sheikh Abdullahi bin Zaid Al Nayan. In a statement, the Algerian Foreign Affairs Ministry says that talks have touched on the ongoing crisis in the Gulf, situation in Libya, Yemen, and Israeli violations of al Skal mocks. As they also discuss bilateral relations and views regarding latest developments in the region. Sheikh Abdullahi stressed during the meeting that the relations between the two countries was based on understanding and shared points of view on issues of common interest. He noted that the constant desire to advance bilateral relations towards wider horizons is to answer the aspirations of the leadership and people of both countries. Mosael described the relations between UAE and Algeria as exemplary and strategic, as both countries' determination is to strengthen their cooperation in all areas. He also praised the UAE's role at the Arab and international level, as well as its continuous efforts to resolve regional and international issues. Meanwhile, Sources says that Algeria was seeking to join mediation efforts with, with regards to the crisis with Qatar. We we'll go on a short break. More news when we return to stay with us.